Well, we just finished bending time and space with Peter Crone. Uh, I know that this one was thick, deep, and full of mind-blowing information. So I'm really, really excited to see what everybody took down for notes. Uh, Chad, let's start with you. What did What did you take down today from this? Man, first of all, uh, I don't think I've ever seen you use the mind blown emoji as often as you just did. And I was like, yeah, mind's blown. Wow, so much here. Um, worry, you know, he talked a lot about worry and how much of a waste it is because he said, don't worry about thoughts of a presumed future. Like it hasn't even happened yet. So why are we worried about it? And 90% of what we worry about never happens in the first place anyway. So it's like, why? Why do we do that? I think we'd all be better for not doing that. He talked about reverse engineering the negative patterns that we have in our life. And just that we, this idea of changing and that we can unlearn things and we can uh, think, feel, act and get different results by when we change our code. Um, most people are trying to avoid a bad future, which hasn't happened yet. And that is exhausting. So exhausting. What happened happened. It couldn't have happened any other way because it didn't crazy. Um, we aren't victims of circumstances. We are beneficiaries from it. That is wow. Talk about having a, a, a different type of perspective on our past and, and anything we're going through. Um, if it's not life threatening, it's just ego threatening. <laughs> um, just do a couple more here. One that he talked about, the, the not enoughness epidemic, and I thought I'd sell on this one for just a, a minute or two because um, I see this a lot. You know, a lot of people chase something out of out of they're not enough, they're not enough, they're not enough. And, and it's like we think we'll have peace or we'll have happiness when we obtain or we acquire or we get that only to learn when we get it that that's a black hole and it just leads to the nothingness to the next thing and the next thing. And years ago, a few years ago, I um, ran across, you know, a treasure like this guy, Peter Crone and, and John Wooden. And um, when I read what his father passed down to him, um, basically his seven, what, what he calls his seven point creed, I was like that right there, that's treasure. And so I actually put on a note card and then I gave it to my son who's 16 now and he keeps it in his wallet because I, I for me, that was just a truth that I thought if I can just keep this center in my life, uh, Cause you know, when you look at John Wooden's life, you see the fruit, you see the fruit in the love, you see the fruit in the family, you see the fruit in everyone who, who talks about, it. you see the legacy. I mean, coach of the century, you see the, all the different things that he did with a, in my opinion, a consistent peace throughout his life. And so his seven things, um, and he says, dad's seven point creed is number one, be true to yourself. Number two, help others. Number three, make each day your masterpiece. Number four, drink deeply from good books, including the good book. Number five, make friendship a fine art. Number six, build a shelter against a rainy day. And number seven, pray for guidance, count and give thanks for your blessings each day. And when I look at that, those seven points, that is a great, that's the best formula that I know of for peace. So I'm going to throw that in there. Uh, you know, John, Jim Rohn would say it a little differently. He'd say, be thankful for what you have while you pursue all that you want. There's a healthy, there's a healthy balance there. Um, and the last one I'll just talk, talk about real quick here is when he says peace is synonymous with success. Peace is not found in controlling your environment. I am in complete harmony with the way things are in this moment. That's peace. Just giving up control. You know, we hear all the time, let go and let God. And that is the most peaceful place we can be. We get the picture of, you know, Jesus being in the boat and storm and everybody's freaking out in the storm and Jesus is taking a nap. When we can get to the place where we can take a nap in the storm, that's when we're, we're there. That's when we're, we're, where we all should uh, desire to be. Um, so that's, I'll just leave it at that, Joel. But man, so deep, deep. And when you talk about deeping drink, drinking deeply from good books and good videos. This was a good one to drink deeply from for sure. So good. I'm, I'm so glad you shared those points because those, those are great foundational things that everybody could start today basing their life off of. You don't, you don't have to feel bad that you didn't have that as a kid. I mean, great thing is, is 
Chad's paying it forward by taking those lessons that were taught to John Wooden as a kid and applying them to his kids. So you could do the same thing, start applying them to your life today, but do your children a service by paying it to them today. Uh, Tay, go ahead and take over. What'd you put down today? Oh man, I think I just put down everything. Uh, if I'm being honest, this is probably, I haven't heard anyone like him speak about mindset and just life this way. This is probably uh, number one that I've heard. He's probably uh, took over Trevor uh, Moore's spot for me uh, from the simple, uh, just hearing the stories and how he just interact with people. Uh, and he like, he reminded me of what Les Brown say, uh, if you want to change somebody's view, he said, uh, distract them from their current circumstances, disrupt their beliefs, their belief system and inspire them to change. And he would just literally sit down, listen to somebody, distract them by just showing them a different future. And then like encourage them to actually go out and live this type of future, like letting them know, like you have the narrative. So uh, just so much good. And, and I think what I, the first thing that I wrote down was he talked about how we're stuck in this past tense language and this first future tense language. And I personally relate to this. Uh, because my wife, she's pregnant with twins and she keep one of the things that, you know, she's just been saying is I don't know how we're going to do it. And one thing that I have to remind her, like, I don't know either, but I know we have three very needy kids right now that they don't care what we're going to do in the future. They need to know, like, what can you do for me today? So, like, I'm not worrying about, you know, what we're going to do when we have five kids. I'm more focused on, like, what can we do today to, like, keep things good, like, keep these our kids that we have right now in this moment take care of them and actually give them their needs. So I love that. Uh, the second thing I wrote down was, uh, and this is probably one of my favorites because I said the quote uh, a couple of Zooms ago uh, and I said, uh, don't let who you were talk you out of who you're becoming. Uh, and he said, the only thing that you're up against is your thought process. Uh, and, and the reason I love that that uh, quote is because the whole premise, the whole basis of that quote is you. You letting somebody who you were like try to influence who you're gonna become. And the only person that's steward in that conversation is you. You get so stuck in looking back at the past and looking at the future that you forget where you are, how far you can and what you can do in this moment that you either don't take a step at all or you revert back to old patterns and habits instead of really stepping into who God has created you to be. So uh, that's one thing that I love. Uh, and another that, man, it's just so much good. Um, he said, it's not you, it's a pattern. And I was like, man, that is so true. Cause one of my, like, I just, I, I'm a quote guy. So that was probably the number one reason why I love him because he just got some fire quotes. Uh, and I love that. Cause one of mine is like, don't believe apologies, believe patterns. Like when I, me personally, when I find myself saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to like take a step back and like, okay, if you're sorry, that means you're really being sorry. Meaning like you're being lazy, you're doing something and you haven't corrected that behavior. So like, you're not sorry for it because you haven't corrected. So like, what's the pattern that keep uh, allowing you to like, say you're sorry, like go back and correct that pattern of what you're doing. So uh, I love that because it's taking inventory of like understanding like, and I always say like, if you want to change somebody's life, change their day. Like you can't try to change somebody's life and send them back and doing the same behavior, behaviors and patterns that they've been doing to get to where they are now. Like you literally have to change their day. Like what do your morning routine look like? For me personally, when I brush my teeth, like I, like I have a word of the year, but with that word of the year, I also have like almost uh, day, uh, devotions for the entire month. So when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm not just brushing my teeth, looking in the mirror. Like I read this thing to myself every single morning, reminding myself like what my mission is for that day what my mission is for that month, understanding like this is only for now. Tomorrow is probably going to change. And I'm okay with that because I'm open to redirection from God. If, I, if, I'm, say, if I'm truly going to say like I'm surrendered to God, then I can't make my plans and expect God to come and lead me with my plans. Like I have to be open to him, lead me with his plans and just going about it that way. So uh, that was one thing that I love. Uh, and just the last thing that I'll share that I just, man, it's just because when he talked about losing his, his dad and his mom, like I can relate to that because I immediately thought back to me losing my mom at uh, 15 and just kind of just, that kind of blew my whole world up. But he said, you can't change your future, uh, but you can change your, your uh, history by changing the narrative. 
Uh, and that's one thing that I've, I've kind of looked back and do like, cause I just, the, the one thing when I look back and lose my mom, I don't think about, you know, the, the bad things that went on that week. I think about that Monday, my last time seeing her and the last words that she, like, she left for us. And I think once I hold on to that, that's that hope. That's me pointing and understanding that Jesus is real for one and that we have a faithful God, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what you're going through. We have a faithful God that knows what he's doing. He knows the plans that he has for you. And everything that he has prepared for you he's going to send you on a journey to become that person in order to get it so for me i think once you learn that you have at any single moment you can change the narrative you can decide this is not how my story is going to going to go but you have to make that decision in the moment and you have to change your steps in that moment you can't decide that you want to do something and keep going that same way that's not leading you there. You have to actually change your behavior, change the patterns and everything that you're doing in that moment and make a decisive uh, decision to actually take that other uh, path to uh, step into who you're, who you're called to be. So uh, I just want to encourage you guys. The fact, the reason I love that, because I think many times we go with the narrative that other people are writing for us. And that's not the plan that God has for us. The plan that he has for you is for you. He's giving you a dream, not somebody else. So when he gives you a dream, don't like get mad when other people tell you it's not possible. It's not for them to believe in. It's for you to believe in. So you have to stick to that dream. You have to stick to that path. You have to stick to like everything that God has brought to you, the people, the circumstances, the everything, and understand like this is happening for you. There's things in this, what you're going through that's going to develop you into becoming everything that God has created you to be. So uh, just so much good in this. I'm personally uh, going to just go back and just listen to more of this. I think it was just so much good that he talked about you know, some things that I literally have not heard before. So I'm just interested in learning more about what he stands and really just like you said at the beginning and taking some of these things and actually, actually implementing it. Because I think if we actually implement what he's talking about, like we will be more at peace and we would like all like literally when they say like wherever you are be there I think it would cause us to be more present in the moment and not worrying or stretching ourselves out over something that haven't happened yet so uh just so much good in this one man just thank you for sharing this one as well Joe Tay's down there preaching it's amazing oh gosh this this is uh, uh one of those I guess sneaker ones like you weren't expecting to learn the things that you learned today, and and that's the way that I looked at, it. and that's why I was so excited to to share. And I'm sorry, guys, because I had meant to share it like the following Tuesday after I had watched it, um, but we were already in a series, and I, I completely forgot about it until I was trying to look for something today, and God was like, "No, this is the one that's important for people right now." And what I love about this is you are only ever up against your own mindset. When you learn the fact that there is no past and no future, it's just based on the language in your mind. It just that's mind blowing. Like Chad said, I put all the mind blowing emojis in the chat because it truly is unbelievable once you grasp onto that. Not only that, you have the ability to time travel and change your history and time travel and change your future based on how you view things and the perception of what actually happened minus the emotion. I think that's something super powerful. As he said, if you can look at the situation that happened to you, even though it may have been horrible, it may have been bad, it happened. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can change about it. The way it happened is the way it happened and it did. Now you can look at that from two different lenses. It happened to you and it happened for you. So depending on which lens you look through, develops the pattern and the mindset of how things will happen to or for you in the future. But the great news is, is now that you are aware of this new transitional piece, this new transitional lens that you have the ability to look through, you can change your past and your history. You can look back at it and go, oh, that happened to me and continue to live in that victim mindset. 
or you can say it happened for me and look for taking the power back from that situation and using that to fuel you to move forward. You are already able to do it. There's nothing that's available that you have to go get to do this. It's already available and you are able to do this. You just have to make that decision. You can create your future by what you do today in the present. Take the present and create the new future that you want. I love this. It's not you. It's the patterns and the habits that you've created. Guys, if you take and create different patterns and different habits, you can create a different you. You have to use your programming to your advantage. And that's what separates the successful from the unsuccessful because survival is ultimately what everyone's hardwired and coded to do. Most people are trying to avoid a future that hasn't happened yet. Successful people are trying to create a future that, haven't, that hasn't happened yet. What is the video of your past running in your mind? the thing that constantly goes through your mind about your past, because this develops that pattern and that habit. Now, if you can go back to what I said previously and what Peter Krohn said is if you can reframe that video to play differently, it will change the habits and the patterns, which ultimately change the way you look at things. He said, fundamentally, we as human beings are chasing a feeling whether it's in relationship, whether it's in money, whether it's in success, all of the things boil down to chasing a feeling. So once you can figure out what that feeling is that you're trying to chase, now you can use and control that. I mean, like Tay said, this is one of the most mind-blowing, mind-bending conversations on mindset ever because it's not just, oh, you need to think positively. You know, Joel always says you have to be an eternal optimist. No, he's physically saying you can change your physiology, you can change your past, you can change your present, and you can change your future all with the way you create the conversation in your head. When you look at the narrative that you have in your head, you have the ability to make it something different in a way that can change your future. If it's not threatening your life, it's pretty much only threatening your ego. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing that when I heard that the first time, I was like, oh man, if I don't have to call 911 for it, it's pretty much my perception of what it's going to do to me. Uh, man, that's, that's huge. Past hurts inform future fears. So our, our body and, and our mind is always designed to protect and predict future outcomes. So it takes whatever happened in the past, hardwires it into your system and says, okay, going forward, I'm, I'm afraid of X. I'm looking at fear because that is what happens. Most people speculate towards the worst possible outcome because our body body and our mind is designed for self-preservation. So it's always looking to predict and protect. But what happens in that is you are perpetuating your current predicament. Because if you're always looking for the worst outcome and looking to protect yourself, you're going to stay in those bad mindsets, those fear-based controlling outcomes. What you need to do is step outside of that and kind of face your fears and kind of push yourself to the edge of those limits because then you break out of those cycles and move yourself forward. I love the conversation of you are enough versus are you doing enough? Every single one of you at the core of who you are is enough. God created you for a specific reason he puts you on the planet at this specific time. You are enough. But that doesn't mean you are doing enough. So you as a human being, you are enough. You are an amazing person. God created you with a purpose. But if you are not doing 
the purpose that he designed you to be. That is why you feel discontent. That is why you feel that edginess that something's not right. It's because you are not doing enough of what it is God designed you to do. Now, the difference between the successful people and the unsuccessful people is they take that you are enough and you are doing enough and they want to prove it. So if somebody's speaking negativity over you, you fall into this perpetual pattern that we talked about where you are proving those things to be correct. While successful people take that chip on their shoulder and instead of allowing it to become a boulder and hold and weigh them down, they take that chip and they use it to disprove the things that people are saying about them. So are you the person that says, yeah, you're right. And you kind of hunch down. Are you the kind of person that says, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. Watch me do this. That is the mindset that you need to shift to. The subconscious patterns that you have design what you do. So you can stop living in that fight or flight moment and recognize it and change it subconsciously for your future because you can't fix your history, but you can reframe it to power you through your future. Now, I'm going to finish with this because this was one of the greatest statements that they covered. Guys, whatever situation you're in, you need to realize this. You are the only one of you and that is your superpower. God only created one of you with the gifts and talents. He only put one of you in this planet. He only put one of you in history. He only put one of you out there to accomplish what it is you're supposed to accomplish. And because of that, that is your superpower to go out and apply that and use that to change others' lives. Don't hold what God has given you in for you because God created you to go impact other people's lives. Guys, we're so excited that you joined us today. Make sure you go back through and watch this again because so much depth of stuff that could release you to go do amazing things the rest of this year. Go out and use your superpower today. We'll see you here again next time.